This episode of Why We Bleep is sponsored by Signal Sounds. Purchasing things makes me feel great. I don't know about you, but if I'm down, there's nothing like going mid and side and buying a warring lerm slurm slur, which is the name of a module which can offer mid-side processing in Eurorack. It's something that the people at Signal Sound sell. Signal Sounds, the shop in Glasgow, staffed by total and utter lovely people. They're only interested in selling the best of the best. Stuff that's cool, stuff that's interesting. And they know it back to front, mid to side. Don't get Alex started on mid-side processing there. He'll lock you in overnight <laughs> until you buy a mid-side module and then he'll let you leave in the morning. But you'll be grateful because you'll have learned something about synthesis, you'll have discovered a new way to process things, and mostly, you'll have escaped. So for your modular needs, your synth needs, any needs, go on the website of signalsounds.com and purchase things. signalsounds.com Why We Bleep is also sponsored by thonk.co.uk I have a question for you. Would you like all the drum sounds? All of them? Yes, I'd like all of them. All right, well, not all of them, but a lot of them. A near infinite amount. Controlled via DSP and available in 4HP modules that are affordable to buy and which you can change the synthesis engine in so you can create any manner of drums with them. There's wonderful library of drum synthesis models that you can turn and change and twist the sound of in real time. Would you like that? Yes, I would. What is this witchcraft? It is called the PROC drum module from thonk.co.uk. It's affordable, you can DIY it, and it sounds rad as shit. I don't know. I've been smashing it real bad. And where I come from, that's a good thing. So check out the PROC drums at thonk.co.uk. That's thonk.co.uk. <laughs> Hello, my bleeps. How the devil are you? Very nice of you to join me again for another month. Yes, it's true. I didn't lie. There is another podcast upcoming. And it's with the wonderful, beautiful human, the Liverpudlian ledge, that is James Young of the Warp Records duo Dark Star. A very cool and interesting band. And I trust that you've heard Dark Star's music. If you haven't, you can hear all of their music on the Warp Records site because you can basically just stream their entire back catalogue off the site like its own private Spotify. Ooh, I know I said that word. We're going to talk about Spotify with James later to varying degrees. I like Spotify. I subscribe to Spotify. I think it's friggin' amazing. And so does James. But there's a lot to be unpacked. But yes, welcome if you've not listened to this before. Why We Bleep is basically a vehicle for me to steal ideas from other electronic musicians <laughs> um, and have you along for the ride. But we do sometimes talk to electronic equipment manufacturers as well, which is an extra special treat. But there are very few of them in the UK, and I'm trying to do these all face-to-face. -face. More to come, I hope. Anyway, I've been doing extremely northern things. I played a gig in Wharf Chambers in Leeds at a night called Sequential, and I'm going to post the set. In fact, it will be posted by the time this is up. So if you'd like to hear it, check it out. I was dead, mega dead pleased with it. It was one of those shows where you just kind of start well and it goes well and it ends well. And it was the right kind of crowd where everyone was just up for dancing. And I don't, yeah, it was just a banging crowd. And that just made me feel amazing. But it was the thing I was most pleased with playing, like the best set I think I've played. At least that is until I played Todmorden. And there is a set from that coming up as well. Anyway, it's good to do this stuff. I suppose that's a good thing about the modular. If you are configured so that the thing can just spit out music in real time and you can actually make a metric hectare of music. Not that all of it is great, 
but I am trying to be selective about what I put out. But it's not about perfection. It's just about actually bloody finishing some stuff. And um, this is something that we talk a bit about in the podcast with James. Um, but there's actually something else that I wanted to shout out, which is very much in that vein, which is that I've been messing more with Tim Exile's app called Endless. Endless has three S's on the end. Less end, um, which we actually do talk about in the podcast as well. So I've been messing around with it in beta for a while. I am not sponsored in any way by Tim or what he does. I just actually think it's amazing. And what this is, is, is basically a collaborative music making app for your fern where you can, where different people, no matter where you are in the world, can basically do like WhatsApp, but for making a tune. Um, and so like... By which I mean, you, you've got this basic interface and there's like a little like drum pad and the, you can enter notes on a sort of isometric grid, a bit like a push. Um, and there's some basic preset sounds, um, quite a few different preset sounds, and there's also effects. And so using this app, you make a little drum beat and you hit loop and it turns that drum beat into a collapsed bit of audio which then goes into a little loop slot and you can then just add more to it so you can add another beat or you can you know add bass or effects or whatever and you've got some separation of these loops but the whole beauty of the way that it works is that it kind of forces you it forces you to make music in real time and to react intuitively to what you're doing in a way that a linear timeline on a computer where you've got to stop the arrangement, rewind and rethink about what you're about to do does not. It's all running in real time and you can just quickly bang things in and everything's, um, you know, quantized if you wish it to be. And because of this forward nature, it just forces you to keep thinking and f- progressing the arrangement and for every time you add a clip it creates a new what it calls riff with three f's and basically you can always go back to those riffs and you can always export them as layers in as wave files you're basically making the equivalent of scenes in ableton live if you're used to that in the you know session view which is the top down sort of top to bottom view it's a bit like that But the amazing thing is because it's collaborative, if you're in a room that has other people you've allowed to be in the jam with you, then they can add things to the riffs. And you will see it pops up saying, you know, Tim Exile has remixed your riff and has either added something or subtracted something or applied effects to something and done something to kind of evolve it. So if you kind of sit for 10 minutes on the bus and just make some riffs and then just kind of close the app and get on with your day, Literally an hour later, you might see this pop up. Tim Exile's done this, which then encourages you to sort of drop back in. So it's kind of asynchronous as well. You don't have to be live in the same place. You could be in completely different time zones. But it just is really, really, really effective. Um, And the tools that he's put in are just enough to do an insane amount of stuff. And some of the things that I've made on it, I categorically would not have made on any piece of equipment or you know any of the pieces of software i would have you know everything that you use be it you know from ableton live to um, a modular synth has its own interface and that lends itself to to making different types of music and there's certainly an endless style of music but you can make anything with it what tim has done is launch a new little mini site for kind of promoting endless um, as it's very much in beta and it's called discover dot endless with three s's dot fm that is discover dot endless dot fm and three s's on endless and what this effectively is is a twitch stream that effectively is a radio station where all the music is music that is being improvised by people invited to one particular live you know endless jam so whatever the latest loop is you can go on and you can hear it in this stream and i was kind of i he launched it and i was jamming in and adding some bits and bobs with loads of people in the jam so it was getting very hectic and i kind of backed off and i went and i had dinner and i was on my phone actually able because i'm able on my phone to go back and look at the old loops and I was like clicking through them and suddenly there's one amazing loop with this beautiful like female vocals. I was like, this sounds great. It sounds like Imogen Heap. And then I realized it's fucking Imogen Heap was in the stream. I was like, oh my God. 
And so later there were bits where Imogen is like adding bits and there was someone else who was just kind of jamming in and it maybe they didn't have that the app's not perfect it's still in beta and there's some bugs where you don't immediately see the riffs kind of come back on certain streams at certain times and there's someone just kind of like randomly going on their own slightly kind of grocky weird little noise thing while Imogen is building this gorgeous amazing you know euphoric techno like a house track and you know and all in the same stream so it was going from amazing gorgeous techno to like kind of weird thing i was like mate um might want to to just heads up just stop stop (laughs) doing your own little thing just contribute to what she's doing i think is probably the uh the right thing to do um and then yeah the other day i'm i'm basically listening to the stream there was no one in it that hasn't so it was just looping this basic little loop and i can listen to basic loops forever i'm sure you're the same um, but i was like ah, i might just let's add something just to advance it and get some people to come in and so i just went outside um and just quickly recorded the sound of bird song and just myself going like oh is there anybody home or is there anyone here um and um, tim exile himself then applies effects and kind of mashes that up and then I was like, oh, this sounds really nice. Just to have, I was like, oh, I just want to have a bit of ambience just so I can continue work um, because it was helpful. And so, yeah, Tim like scrambles my voice into this like scribbly kind of sound bed. And I was like, ah, the one, it needs something. It just needs a little thing. And so I quickly ran to our piano and just sat the phone on my lap and just recorded some chords. And actually they've got this whole hour that ensued afterwards where all the jammers took my piano and built on it. Where'd everybody go? So you hear Tim added like wobbly FM stuff to it, to my voice. And then that piano is just a couple of layers that I added. Nice. Well into that. Um, and then this other guy, Uncle Homunculus, who is a fantastically mustachioed man, um, who I met at um, Superbooth, added to it. Find yourself a comfortable place to be in. Brilliant. Where you can either sit or lie. I assume that you are in pajamas, lying on a comfortable bed or couch, with no pillow under your head. If anybody is sleepy, let him go. Yourself well, well into that. Com- um, skipping ahead, sorry, the line noises because I'm recording the headphone out for my interface. Totally beautiful. That was Echo Locks on his Ebo. Nice, mate. Um, and I'll skip it ahead a bit just so you can kind of hear the turns into this that's me doing Steve Reich vocals proper like um, eventide style uh, crystals vibes going on um, which will mean something if you listen to the end of this podcast we talk a lot about eventides and then someone added this thunderous like bass kick, which I think came maybe 40 minutes in. <laughs> yeah. That. So I should stress, yeah, 40 minutes has passed from the original point here. Um, but how beautiful. And this is just all part of an unbroken stream of music that had continued for 24 to 48 hours or 24 hours at that point. And it's still continuing now. Um, It ebbs and flows as people come and go. Um, And I I don't know, I'm sorry to be talking about this so much, but um, I think this is fucking amazing, quite honestly. There is no other way that this could be done other than with mobile phones um, and with the internet being what it is and, you know, uh, the app being designed in this way. Tim's approach, if you know what Tim does, it's it's all about 
developing tools for live jamming and immediate music. And it's very much an emphasis not on perfection. It's emphasis on getting something out. You know, you can always come back to it and work on it later, but just progress. It's the antithesis of DAW, the sort of DAW freeze, where you've just got too many options and it's too easy to polish things. In this instance, you you make a thing and you hit the little loop and it's committed and it's thrown out to the world and it just gets worked on and developed. And if it's not that great, then someone will will shape it and, and squish it into something that is great. You can just key mash the hell out of it. So amazing. This thing, by the way, you can actually play with. And again, it's called discover.endless with three S's dot FM. And if you go on there, I'm afraid, though, the endless -y thing is iOS only for the moment, um, but it won't be forever. Sorry, I'm just making a note. Um, I will link to that one hour thing that I was just talking about. So if you want to just watch the whole like hour through, then you can and sort of see how it unfolded. But yeah, you can actually try the beta, uh, but you need to be on an iPhone, I'm afraid, at the moment. The final version will have Android and with PC and VST app up the wazoo. But try it. It's actually amazing. Uh, and then one more thing I saw, uh, and I'll I need to find this and link to it. A friend of mine, Rebecca, was posting a um, old like... You know, when the BBC archives on Facebook have like, oh, from the archives from 1979. And basically it was a bit of a horizon doc called the three chord trick. This one particular clip is a guy, Dr. H.J. Campbell, and he's got like a VCS3 and some like EMS filter bank uh, that he's using. He has this sort of clip of a marching band in the military. And he's, he's making a point that marching music stimulates us in a way that is deeply compelling. One cannot help but move. You know, there's something stirring and there's probably a reason why in the military, the march is a stirring, rousing style. You can't help but be moved and physically and emotionally by it. You, you just want to move physically. And he was proposing, he basically uses the filter bank and he pulls it all away. And you can just kind of hear under the whole thing is a beat going boom, 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 a 4-4 four, four beat. And he proposes, and this is um, very dear to my heart as I think about the small person who was inside my wife listening to my sequential gig at Leeds and the subsequent one I played at Todmorden, because I have absolutely no doubt um, that the small person heard it. But what Dr. H.J. Campbell was saying is that the 4-4 four, four beat is, of course, the very first musical neuron to be stimulated, because what a baby's first stimulus is, really, is sound, is her mother's heartbeat. And so... The 4-4 beat is the earliest musical neuron to be formed. And because everything else links off of it, it's the most well-grained and most fundamental musical neuron is the understanding of the 4-4 beat. It's the earliest and it's the best reinforced for that reason, which is a long-winded way of saying techno is absolutely <laughs> the original music. Folks, I've called it. It's true. Anyway, with that thought, let's have a podcast. Um, and today, as I say, we are meeting James Young from the band Dark Star. Um, and I do encourage you to listen to Dark Star's back catalogue. You can hear it all at the Warp website because they literally put the whole catalogue on the site. Um, but yeah, Dark Star are a really, really interesting and wonderful band um, who are not content to do the same thing twice, which is actually the first thing that we talk about, uh, because all their albums are very different. They started off on Hyperdub, don't worry about it, with the album North. But then it's their second album, News From Nowhere, which was on Warp Records, perhaps you've heard of it, which kind of caught my ear, especially just because, and I know they actually hate this uh, comparison, but forgive me, because it gives it some context. But just, it's, there's, if you like Animal Collective's Merryweather Post Pavilion with the kind of euphoric, sparkly, kind of eventide sound, it's absolutely wonderful. And Time Away, an appropriate tune name because they did spend some time away. They actually escaped to Slough It 
in West Yorkshire to record the album. And we talk about the whole process and how they make music generally. It is a very earnest interview. And actually, I mean, James did say, "Ah, maybe you've overshared a little bit, but I don't think that's true. Like anyone who's made music understands the struggle. And, you know, the struggle is just a very, James is a very honest and upfront person. And it's just like, it's not easy. It isn't easy writing music. And especially if, you know, I'm sure, and although we don't implicitly say this, but, you know, when you're operating at that sort of level and you've got lots of eyes on you and there's lots of press, and also combined with the fact that they actively don't want to repeat themselves and want are continually trying to push things forward in terms of what they do, then it makes it hard to make music. You know, you can't be totally satisfied. It's, it's hard to be easily satisfied. And then we do actually chat about a lot of gear stuff, despite the fact that James is adamantly like, it's how you use it. It's not what you use. They have very little gear. In fact, I own their H3000. Uh, James very kindly did me a very nice price on the H3000 somewhat slightly to his chagrin um, because they'd struggle to get it repaired and I basically just paid through the nose in order to force the whole thing to be repaired. I don't think it was an easy job for the person who did it, but um, I now have their H3000, so I, that's my small claim to fame. And we talk about other things, the things they love, Digitact, Electron Digitact, which I just got one. James talks about workflow love for the MPC 2500. And then just talking about the intent behind some of their albums, especially behind Foam Island and the voices. And then especially, and one of the main things that James wants to talk about is work that they did with some young people in Liverpool, which is where, you know, it's where he's from, it's where his family's from. And that is, by his own admission, one of the best things that they have done. So... Enough chat, and it is time for us to meet Mr. James Young from the band Darkstar. Thanks. I think we always try and push something new for us yeah like it's I th- we really don't like like rehashing yeah. stuff yeah. and um that definitely seems to come across like, yeah yeah i think I, but i think that has also probably worked against us as well i think um i think people in this climate are rewarded more by like you know like uh concise output you mean as in like just give the goods i would just want the same thing again and yeah again and again. It, well, it seems to me that that kind of like we always get asked about like the singles before north on yeah. hyperdub yeah so like I, I, that 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 suggests to me that you know do you mean like more dancey stuff yeah yeah i actually funnily enough was like i was listening to it and then reading a bit just sort of just reading a bunch of old articles and was like Suddenly occurred to me, I'd never heard any of your dance music. I've never actually heard it. I've only heard the sort of, we're an electronic indie band music. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like that sort of phase. <laughs> like you're actually still making dance tunes so all the time. Or is it just like... We've, just got, we've, got, a lot, we've got a lot, yeah. We've, we just made like a load of garage and we played it to uh, Stephen, who, who looks after us at Warp. And yeah, uh, yeah I mean, it's, it's pretty good. I just don't know whether, I just don't know whether it's, like what we should be doing. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're like in the middle of a record at the moment. Mm. So we've we've probably made I think two or three albums I think in the last like in the last few years, but that haven't no one's heard. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> it has been a bit of a gap as well. Yeah, like I was also looking at and like going one, two, three, two, three. We're like we're due one. We're overdue yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, you are. Uh, Aiden had a baby. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, but um, to do it. and yeah, like I've been up, I I've been up north for a little bit and stuff like that. So, yeah, we are we are due to like it's starting to feel you know pressing. Yeah, it, but it's a, it's a weird time to release music. I think full stop. Yeah, definitely. I mean, obviously, yeah, the political climate is a thing. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, does that actually? Or do you mean in terms of like just music climate or both really? Yeah. But like I was reading something about um, streaming platforms and I, I'm not that bothered about finishing things right now because they just doesn't feel like it's just a bit boring, isn't it? The way music's released. <laughs> do you mean <laughs> just like chucked on Spotify and, yeah. and just like 
like ragged for a few months and then forgotten. And yeah, it, I mean, a few months is good. Mm. Fair, fair and true. Yeah, um, but n- I mean, it, it's not that I would, I'm, I'm like whatever about finishing stuff because we we are like consciously trying to finish a lot of stuff at the moment. It's more, I don't know, like if I I'm not engaged after that point anymore. Yeah. It's just a bit like uh, this is this is just a bit. But isn't that always the sort of case that you do you like literally make music and then reconsume your own music? Do you actually listen to your own tunes or do you just no kind of no not, not after then, not after it's uh, finished now? Yeah, I, like I did. Because it was the fifth anniversary of News from Nowhere the other day, and we, it's getting, um, it's this is like something coming out on that soon, and um, I, I that was the first time I'd, I'd listened to that since, mm. like mastering, I think, and then that that made me think with this record, I was like, oh, we're way off. Oh, what do you mean? As in, it doesn't sound good enough. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, no. yeah, yeah. But, but just the detail. Right. They, like the level of production. But we did have like um, Richard Formby with us at that say, point. Yeah. So, yeah. He, he seems like, yeah, you said in an interview that he was pulling details out, like of things that you could just basically throw stuff in and he made sure that it all kind of got used in some degree. Things you would never have like actually bothered to, either yeah. you would never have captured or he, you know, you needed someone else to like say, so, well, that's a good bit, bring it to the front. Yeah, he's got, a, he's got an interesting way of working, particularly because we'd never worked with anyone before that. A producer. <clears throat> yeah, no one. So I even, like, I'd mi- I mixed the first record. We, Aiden and myself produced it, so, and that was just in a flat. Yeah. So, um, yeah, Richard's uh, interesting, really interesting guy. And, yeah, it, it's like you say, you can... We had, like, a, a group of demos that we, we thought were, you know... Uh, like f- finishable mm. and then he um, yeah the, what the way he processes things was, ju- was just like oh okay well I didn't know what we had then as in what he took it and just like plussed it or oh like yeah. t- to a point that it, it changed like everything so what did he do what's what There's is a lot his, of revox like, going on revox yeah a lot of tape Ooh, yeah right. um, a lot of um I think that was the first time I'd encountered the even tide, which blew my mind. The H three thousand. Yeah, yeah. I think. Thanks very much for the H three thousand. Yeah, yeah. It's my pleasure, although it isn't. Um, <laughs> well, you know where it is. Yeah, if you yeah. ever need it back, yeah, it's there. Yeah, um, and it's in good condition. It's been it's been serviced. Oh yeah, you told me. Yeah, we, we that. I mean, yeah. So that was the first time we'd kind of played with. I, I, I'm, I'm not that musical. It yeah. takes me a, lot, a while to like get my head around it. But what I found with the Eventide was like immediately you could play with harmony. Mm. And I, I just thought that was great. And you put something in and it, yeah. you, it almost plays with you. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So like that totally um, transformed what we'd been trying to do. And uh, yeah, he's, he's just got like, he's just got like a collection of like, interesting synths keyboards like an old he had an old desk at the time i can't remember where it was but everything kind of as well and this is no slight to rich but richard but everything kind of doesn't work as well which makes right, it, yeah. which makes it you know even more like it the process is interesting up there it's not it's not as straightforward as as you'd think but then i think it it really helps everything mm. yeah and He's like he doesn't know like shortcuts and everything on Pro Tools oh, right. and, and that and because that was the first time we'd used like Pro Tools, so like I from that from working with him, I just vowed that I would never learn shortcuts just because oh, nice. I just because it's just like well let's just dig, yeah you know there's got there's got to be some like hardship here, and I think he was like he's he's definitely does that yeah I don't know does that just give you time to reflect if you just literally can't. I suppose no, sure, I mean, it's a it, habit it, for it, me. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's like, it's form a, habits. It's a poor excuse, mm. really. But, you know, it's just something I've done. And then uh, the guy that we work with on mixing after that, he's like, just like, you know, he's, he's so uh, capable on stuff like that. His name's Lex. He's like a mix wizard. Yeah. 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 Yeah, mixing is really hard. That is a subject I've... I have bad ears and bad rooms 
and like I don't I really struggle with that process and especially like doing electronic music it's so easy to have things that are hard to mix because anything can be a, become a bass line or anything and especially using like filters and doing like really sharp squeaky things you end up with like horrible peaks and stuff like that oh yeah I won't, like, go, I won't go near it yeah <laughs> like after that record I'll never like after I did the first record and I think it added like maybe nine ten months onto the process because oh that was just it was it was hopeless trying and then went and then in this one yeah uh, Richard was was like was told us we should go with this guy Lex mm. and uh, get someone to do it professionally yeah and he and then after that I was like oh god what an idiot I was thinking trying thinking just that my man. mixes were good you know yeah yeah well it does sound good though I mean the record sounds great but. Yeah. But I suppose it's still, I don't know. I didn't hear it in its raw state, so I don't really know what, what yeah. you were starting with. But yeah, so how do you how do you work then? Like, I remember I came when I came to pick up the H three thousand. It was in like your old, you were, you were in that sort of mad building. Where just was it? it was like round the corner. F- is it Hack- somewhere in Hackney? Or oh, it- on Hackney Road. Yeah. It was yeah. in like you. Were, it was like a mad sort of dilapidated building, which has yeah. now been like what past it's been torn down. Yeah, yeah. Um, we were there for a little bit. That was that was my least favorite room to make music. It yeah. was quite dingy. Yeah, it was <laughs> horrible. I mean, we was we were like we were kind of like up against it to try and get some space, and it was cheap. So yeah, of course we got it. I mean, yeah, nothing good came out of that room. <laughs> it was horrible, and the way we had it as well was just bizarre. We had like these two school tables. Yeah, yeah. In the middle of a room, it was and a then square. Just, it yeah, was like a square, square table. So it was, I thought I was like, oh, this is interesting. It's how, it's how warp artists do it. <laughs> this is the process. Yeah, yeah. But, so we were. Just, that that place was awful. Um, you did, did you have? I mean, you had speakers, but I can't remember. Did you have speakers in? Yeah, there? we had, we've got some like Neumann monitors. Mm, that was it. Yeah. And then, but there was like a laptop, a Digitac. There was the Juno sixty, the H three thousand, and you had like mic, the mic literally in a cupboard. Yeah, to yeah. The side, but yeah. So, but is that like actually that would be your writing setup or something? Or are you like not too any, far from that? Yeah. yeah. Now, anyway, mm. we we we're we're pretty we're not that precious with equipment we'll like swap and sell loads of it and yeah. bring other stuff in i think it I, I it helps me to try and get my head into like also it's pretty like honestly it's pretty tight at the moment trying to make music so like as in yeah gear doesn't ever lose its value so like sometimes you just got to sell it to pay your rent right yeah you know what i mean yeah yeah what well, yeah, exactly like being a musician in the modern age is not exactly it's not like the old days no it's, no it's certainly not yeah but um so what do you what is your current setup like right now it's uh it's the it's the most simple it's ever been it's i'm using the isotope iris yeah in pro tools with uh machine uh, yeah. but only the software yeah to run beats off and then i've got a digitact yeah and we've got a Juno, and we've got a couple of stomp boxes, uh, the Hitch Factor and the Delay. But mm. I mean, that's we're kind of touching in and out of those. I mean, you know, we've hammered those mm. over the years. Um, yeah, Time Factor and Pitch Factor. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Um, and then uh, we, and then when we when we feel like it's something like we'll you know, take it to someone and help, like just mess about for a few days. As in take like all the <laughs> loops in and go to a proper but studio. Th- at that point, it'll, they'll be pretty much like, like, yeah, laid out. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. So we, we've only, we've just got back from a place in battle with our mate Lex. He's got, he's got a really, really nice studio. Like battle Kent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. By yeah. the seaside. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And I like uh, the idea of going up and just doing yeah. going to a quiet place and actually just getting music done. Isn't yeah, it? it's decent. He did us a favour and uh, let us use his space for a while. He, he helped us as well. He's he's, he's wicked. He's just uh, we met him in Conk because we yeah. we used to have a space in Conk. Um, yeah, so he was like a group of us there. Uh, him, Gwilym Gold, mm. Jamie Woon, and us. Yeah. So that we were all kind of finishing an album with him at that time. Yeah. Mm, so like we kind of just carried on working with him and then that's who Richard Formby recommended yeah, yeah. us mix with but he's he's a serious guy so what do you do when you like if you're going up to the place in battle yeah how do you like what do you actually use the studio to do do you know what I mean like what actually what does it give you that you wouldn't just get from finishing it at home 
Uh, this time we like reprocessed, all, like redid all the beats basically uh, with like betterized them. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's got these. He's got like these things that you clip onto over drums, mm. and then you just they they're, they're MIDI programs. So oh yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So they were quite interesting. Um, we just used an old MP, one of his old MPCs. Uh, he's got a K Risk modular guy in Burnley. What is that? It's just like a modular, but it's manufactured by a dude in Burnley. I think. What, a modular synth. Yeah. What is it called? K Risp. K Risp. K Risp. Yeah, I've, it sounds in, incredible. Is that? That's not like. Is, is that guy called Paul? I'm not sure. Maybe. Right. I've not heard of that. Yeah, so that's we... That's like the, the sort of the secret stuff, the Yorkshire modules. It's really good. <laughs> is it? Yeah, yeah. Is it like big? It's yeah, like, he's got like... Uh, like you're talking to someone like who's a novice with yeah, that yeah, type of stuff. What... But he's got like that many units. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A bigly amount. But what we do is we always send like hi-hats and that and snares to it. And then like he just like sets it up so we can modulate the envelopes like mm. and, you know... Filter them. And exactly, stuff. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like just play with the for the release and mm. all that. Mm. So yeah, we like all, we, we kind of get into that. And then he's got, he's got a really nice uh, Jupiter as well. So Ooh. we just mess around with that. Is it the eight or the six? It's the eight. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. But I'm all about the eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I had one. I mean, it's just disgusting how much they cost now. Yeah. It's like 10 grand. Mm. It's just sad because it's like, you know, they should be like out there making music. I mean, they are being used to make music, I'm sure, but it's just like, do you know what I mean? I mean, with that said, actually, Roland did make a little mini version of the Jupiter 8, which is really good. Is it? But it's like, it's soft, it's like digital, it's not technically analogue. Yeah, yeah. But it sounds wicked. And it's like, for anyone who's hankering after like a Juno or something like that can't afford, because a Juno 60 would be like a grand, 1200. Um, you can get these little like Roland things and they sound amazing. Mm. But they are literally like that, that yeah, big. I think I've seen them. <laughs> the Juno, the Jupiter's like knob, throw, the, like the throw of the slider is one centimetre. Right. It's like from top to bottom. You've got to like use your little like a little thumb or a little pinky finger just to like nudge them. Yeah. So he's, he's, he's helped us out recently and then we're just kind of like sifting through what we've got at the moment. Mm. Takes a while. Probably. So do you, yeah. So like I, this is something I always struggled with was like how to how to basically take loads and loads of music and actually like distill an album out of it. Like Yeah. And I mean, it sounds like you've actually you have kind of written for projects. If you've like got multiple albums, then you, there obviously is like different feels to different I think you obviously had like different eras of different styles and that some is more dancing, some is not. But I suppose the question is like how do you actually get to it so yeah exactly like how do you actually go do you know what this is this is it and this is coherent uh it, ta- it takes us a really long time uh just because i don't know i don't i actually don't know why but we, we are slow which isn't pr- probably not the best thing in this climate to be <laughs> um but i mean we just keep writing and writing until you know we've got like we definitely don't overwrite i think we always like if it's not good enough we don't finish it right we don't even arrange it it's just like oh that's not really working yeah. leave it so w- when we've got about 10 12 tunes we'll start that we like and they like we like where they're going in yeah. terms of like structure Style yeah exactly well. we'll start working on them um and that i think that in itself is pretty focused by mm. that point you've kind of you know got to it so like what what is the direction that you want to go um We've been working with this organ player on commission stuff. His name's James McVinney. And we've done a couple of, we've just, we're just writing a piece for him at the moment that we're going to go to America with in three weeks to, to perform. Um, but I think since writing stuff for him, with him in mind, this is like the third project we've done with him that isn't an, a, like to do with warp or, you know, like mm. what dark star do. Yeah. Um, I think that's like informed it a lot, just trying to be a bit more expansive musically. So he has to do different types of, cause it's not, is it just organ? Literally, yeah, it's just it's organ. Literally, literally, no. So I was very focused. Oh, and then anything we like add to it. And we're, have you, do you know that, um, that voice live pedal? The TC oh, one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're, we're messing around with that at the moment, just mm. doing like, like kind of gospel choir stuff. Mm. So we're, that's what we're working with at the moment. And I think that's, 
I think writing for him has um, probably changed the way our, our perspective a little. Hmm. On like what music could be. Yeah, yeah. And, and maybe, and also maybe just not like, we we throw a lot into it, like sonically, and I think we're trying to be a bit more focused on that front. So like, you know, because when you try and do like News From Nowhere or mm. Foam Island Live, it's... It's pretty it's much bonkers, impossible. Like, yeah, yeah, it's not happening. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's too many bits. Yeah. You've got too many like squiggly bits. In yeah, it. yeah. So I think we are, we're like those squiggly bits, we're trying to like rein in. We've been like looking at like chords way more this time, yeah. bass lines, you know. Yeah, what yeah. I mean? Things that can be played by a band more naturally. Yeah. 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 Even if it's just Aiden and me, you know, just like kind of running things off as well. We don't, I mean, I think performance for us is is evidently like second yeah, uh, yeah. priority. Yeah, you know? it's a necessity. Yeah, after you've written an album, exactly. it's not like you're raison d'être. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no chance. I did We've see. Had some I mean, nightmare. I, yeah, I saw you play. Like I've seen you play a couple of times. I'm sure. Did I see you at Village Underground? I definitely met you at Village Underground. Yeah, that was a nightmare. That one. I think I remember enjoying the show though. What went wrong? Like, what was the? Uh, to be honest, I mean. You could pick any live show that we've done and something went wrong. So I can't remember, but I remember like just thinking, this is, this is, I need to like rethink this. <laughs> <laughs> well, just from the ground up. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that, that is, that tends to be the way I think. Um, what actually goes, what you just, technical problems or just lots like, of technical just, problems. Or um, like it's not, you're not feeling it. Like just not. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Like, As in the show just isn't, it's not what you would want to see. Yeah, yeah, that 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 really is a stickler for me, that one, just being on stage thinking, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Not again. <laughs> yeah. Here we are. Yeah, no. there's, there's, some that, there's some that work, though, to be fair. There's some that work. There's been, like, moments, do you know what I mean? Um, I like really, I, I really, really like it when... Like when you get there and everyone's just on it and like it sounds really nice. I think that for me, immediately I'm like, okay, this could be something like, you know. Do you mean when you, when you play and someone like they get it right? Yeah, and like, yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm, yeah, and then that, that's down to us as well, you know. Just yeah. trying to like, you know, think about the dynamic much more in a live setting. But yeah, there's there's been there's been like tricky moments. <laughs> Do you have like a live sound person? Do you have like someone who takes care of we it? Have at, we have, we have at that point. Yeah. Yeah. It, I it, think that's like, yeah. I mean, I've not, I've having played live a bit is I've never had that luxury. And every single time it's just like rolling dice. Like, yeah, yeah. How right do I get it tonight? Like, yeah. and you never get a sound check at festivals or anything. I mean, I don't know if you were playing lots of festival sets, but those are always an, a nightmare for that reason. Yeah. You don't get anything. Yeah. Just a line check and yeah. yeah. Sometimes not even that. Yeah. yeah it's rubbish. So, yeah, we have we have at times. I mean, again, it's a, it's whether like things are kind of clicking for us in that, and we've got a bit of momentum, and we, you know, the money's there to do it. Mm. Mm. Mad. So how like, yeah. So I'm just thinking about the sort of yeah the writing process. Like, what is obviously as you're saying, things are changing a bit. But like, what does the sort of typical flow like? I.e., where do you actually start on an idea? Do you know what I mean? Like, how do you know it? You, is it literally fighting around with? Yeah, yeah, it just tends to be. Or, like, more so, um, like, a loop. Yeah. Like a, like a musical loop of chords, maybe. Like a chord progression or... That voice live thing is, like, really interesting us at the moment. We've, we've been doing a lot with that. Just, like, that... kind of, like, heart, like, layered harmonies. Can it, is it a looper as well? Or is it just uh, like, it makes you one I think it can loop, but we don't, we just kind of like get some, like uh, something we like and then we chop it up mm. and then make a loop out of it. But yeah, that, that, that seems to be like, um, informing a lot of what we're doing at the moment. Mm. Uh, it varies. It really does vary. Um, yeah, right, right through like North. The first <laughs> record was, I think we just got like a 500 pound like Korg synth. I think it's an R3 or something. Mm, it's got a vocal the, order on it. Is that, was that white? No, no, it's, it's black. black. Yeah, it's black. Black. Yeah, it's got like a red <sighs> screen on oh, it. Oh, yeah, yeah. That, yes, I know the one you mean. Yeah, so that, that, because what basically we, we started just putting tunes up on MySpace. 
that whole article. You yeah, just, you just lost. Did you hear about MySpace? All of the yeah, tunes lost, have like lost everything. Like, <laughs> no, like back up. I don't it's know. Like, yeah. That is like a modern lesson for all of us. Like. Yeah. Um, so we start. So when we got a little, when we got asked to make a record by Steve Co Nine on Hyperdub, we got a little bit of money, and that that was like the first synth we ever bought. Yeah, three. Yeah, yeah, and it was wicked. Yeah, yeah, um, and yeah, we just like. I think that totally informed that record, mm. and then it really doesn't sound that synthy to me, though. Am I, maybe that's just my own mind. I think we just because we just like even then we were like even with I didn't even know what like what kind of good outboard there was to process stuff, but I was I had like these plugins called Electrics or something like that. Mm. I can't what remember a long yeah. time ago, yeah. but yeah, they're like they're like those weird crack plugins you get with like that just look pretty dodgy. interesting <laughs> yeah but dodgy yeah and uh i like yeah we just used to like really process stuff so it sounded like what we wanted it to yeah, sound yeah. like um but yeah so yeah things that were originally synths don't really sound like mm. it. yeah mm. what about and the singing as well like there's a definitely a vocal sound on north where it's like clipped it's like clipped and it's like gated yeah and then there's like kind of some sort of fuzz crush thing on it like it's that's quite, yeah it's kind of that stuff is i think there's a bit crusher on there and then there's this thing that electrics thing it kind of stutters things yeah. so you've got like a sequence grid and then you can like kind of almost echo on like whatever yeah. note you want so like the the, the vocal kind of re-trigger yeah it's, yes were you singing like actually into the effect as well or is it that all done afterwards afterwards after yeah yeah it's sort of funny it's like is it like trying to i don't know i'm i'm projecting here because this is basically what i do with my, like vocals if i sing on something i basically try and almost obliterate and hide the vocal because it's almost for me personally it's it there's an element of kind of fear and sort of of like singing is i'm not a singer but do you know what i mean it's like so you use like effects as a way of turning your voice into something else like a synth well that was what we that was always our aim i think it, especially then um just burying it you know mm. so it was just like it was like almost instru instrumentation yeah yeah yeah. like any other element yeah so we'd we'd do that um again i like that i mixed that in the flat we were in at the, at the time so yeah it's it, i mean it, it, i suppose it's okay um but yeah that that's that's the one time i think equipment kind of uh informed the sound from a demo point of view yeah whereas the record after that it was we'd, we'd kind of been it was everything changed because we signed to warp mm. so we had more money and uh we just like had better things to mess around with mm. Yeah. You still got to have the intent to like make news from nowhere type sounding things, like which is sounds totally different to the original. Oh, well, I suppose it has processed vocals and some of the same elements, and it's not very like percussion led, it feels it's more like melodic led. Um, but yeah. yeah, it's like obviously still a conscious decision, do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think we wanted to, I think we I, again, it's one of those things, isn't it? You, you we were part of like um i suppose an, an era of like electronic music that really did trade on um like somber kind of <laughs> tones and you know movements and things like that and it, it I, for me it just got really cliche mm. and i wanted and all three of us at the time wanted to just mess about with something a bit more you know joyful yeah <laughs> plus we did leave london as well which i think uh, was a big thing because we we rented this like big kind of uh house in in a village in uh just outside of huddersfield right and just recorded there for 18 months that's amazing yeah what's the village slough it slough it that's what they that's what the locals call it it's slaythwaite slaythwaite yeah slough it they won't have it though no nah. <laughs> yeah uh, that is uh yeah and we have friends up there yeah it's nice they're, well they're in marsden so mm, yeah marsden's really yeah. close the uh i had uh uh what is it oh fuck it's like the beef like beef in like a tea cake with like gravy on it in the place in marsden it's like it's called like there's basically a cafe there we like went for a walk in the up on the moors. It was absolutely like howling, like pissing wet rain. Yeah. Um, and I soaked through the whole thing, but you know, it's like you're out and it's sort of quite nice in a weird way. Go to the pub, have a pint, 
and then go and have like the beef. It's like basically sliced beef with like in a bread cake, but covered in gravy. Yeah. I, I swear that is probably the best meal of my entire life. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. There's some good spots up there. It got, it got, it was, it was a very uh, strange move just because like all, all my friends were in London. So yeah. I've been in London at that point for like, I don't know, at least 10, 12 years. Yeah. So yeah, like moving back, up north but then to a very remote north yeah was like interesting and then i think that i think it took us all a little while to acclimatize and then uh get going on the material uh yeah and and but we'd been talking about that you know like let's try to avoid this thing that everyone seems to be what do you mean like being in london or no it? just more like the sound of everything was in that my kind of song, the somber, like moody. Yeah, that, to me, it sounds quite. It's the sort of slightly hyper dubby kind of things are a bit s serious and severe and forlorn. Yeah, yeah. I think, and then I think North works because of that. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. And I think it's it was a good like thing for us, and it wasn't really about anything to do with hyper dub and stuff like that. It was more just like, well, we've done that, and we don't really want to do it again. You know? Yeah. So, I think that's one thing. If you look at everything we've done, we've we've certainly moved, you know, like from project to project, uh, to something that we'd be curious about, you know. Mm. So yeah, uh, being up there it was interesting. What did, what was the actual setup like? How did it? There was loads, man. It was like it was changing all the time. There was there was so much room. It was like we had like a five bedroom house for eight hundred quid a month. Oh my god! Do you know what I mean? That's the dream between three of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So there, there was like, there was a room in, at the front, which seemed to like be where there would be one kind of bigger setup. And there was like a little room in, in the back of the house that had another one. And it would be like, I I think I started, when once I started talking to Richard, I then started like working away on my own in, the, in my bedroom. James was doing the same thing and Aiden the same thing, so. Yeah, there was all sorts going on, and then and then we met Richard, and I th he 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 was like half an hour drive away. So mm. at that point, you know, we, we it it just felt like a very fitting uh, bunch of tracks to to take to him. Yeah, and then be processed that way and stuff like that. Yeah, and uh, it, like I said, I, I only listened to it again the other week, and it I, I felt like. At the time, I remember listening to it, and then uh, the guy that mixed it, Lex Kendrick Lamar's record came out as we were bringing it out, um, the Good Kid, Mad City thing, and I got so into that that I, I remember texting Lex saying, "This our record's like just an EP, man. It's not. It's like there's nothing to it. Like, <laughs> and then, but then, yeah, I listened back to it, and I'm like, yeah, we we definitely dug in there." Mm. It is a good record. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> not an EP. Yeah. But I, yeah, I know what you mean. It's, I'm sure it's just, I mean, you always sort of, it's too close to something you can't be, can't be objective. Yeah. And like, it just felt a bit, it felt short to me at the time. It felt really like, oh, this is just, it breezes by. But then again, like I said, I, when I'm listening back to it, I do, you, you kind of pick on, I, I remember, I revisited it in my head, you know, like, Oh yeah, I remember what we did here. Mm. It was, it was, uh, yeah, we went in. <laughs> yeah, there's like, I remember, like, there's a lot of bridges in there, like, and I, I remember us really being like, it's not going to be like section A, section B, yeah. and then an ending. We want to like actually it, move and progress and yeah, write and songs. I, I think that's something that surprised me listening back to it. I, mm. I remember, you know, trying to force that James particularly was like. We should try this. So, yeah. mm. so what do you actually do? What is your what is your role when you're like what, in the band? Do you know what I mean? It's, I think it's quite unorthodox. We Aiden will probably it'll be either from a beat or a sample that I'm messing with. Pass to Aiden. Aiden will look at it, try and do something like a like a bass line or a chord progression on it. Pass it back, and then. We'll work that way, and then if we get a few of them, we'll get into a room together and start messing around with with a few things. That's mm. kind of how it goes. It's a lot of like, is this good enough? Yeah, you know. And then when when it gets to the point where Aiden's kind of humming over it, mm. we'll we'll start like thinking, oh, maybe you know, this is what we should be looking at. Yeah. 
And then, yeah, if we get like, if he likes a melody, we'll, uh, he'll pass it back to me. I'll write the lyrics, then he sings them. Mm. So it's a bit. That is like proper tennis. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like literally one process at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So Mad. it's, uh, yeah. we're trying to address that though at the moment. I think we, we, we've been kind of through the mill with this one because I think it got to a point where we were like, is this, is this fun anymore? No, no. So we're just trying to like work out a new thing and, and. What do you mean? What aspect is sort of dragging? Um, I think, I think when you've like, think you've got, you've got it and then you, you revisit it and then you're like, oh no, this isn't, this isn't Shit. what we want to do. <laughs> yeah. I think it's not a particular aspect. No, it's, yeah. It's just more, uh, we've misfired here, you know? Right. So I think, but I think we, uh, I think we've had like extended time away from it each for like ver both of us for various reasons. So coming back to it and, and trying new things is something we want to. I think you mean like different styles or like like you say that like consciously trying to just do like organ music or something that 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 means you don't you can't rely on pre-existing habits or yeah exactly or processes. exactly yeah. and we seem to be more free when it comes to things that aren't you know album related to dark star there's there's it just we just we're just kind of like exploring again we've got a lot of good material that uh we've played to people and and people like it but mm. i don't know if we're quite there yet Mm. There's definitely like the, the basis is there now. Yeah, we just need to figure out how we like make it something that we're that you, we like. You yeah, know, yeah. we do like it, but <laughs> no, 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 it's just like well, that's what I mean. But like when I'm saying about well, I'm, if I'm writing music, I have to like stop myself from judging it too much because it arrests the process, and you just just like you almost need to be sort of like have amnesia and just kind of just. Fit, follow it through and then step back and judge it. I don't know. I, I feel like well, this is only speaking personally, but I've tied myself in knots by like overthinking what I'm doing one and just never finishing anything. It's like a real poison, but yeah, but yeah, we do I mean, that. if you are trying to progress as well and do something totally different, then that's hard. I mean, that does require different processes and yeah. bits of kit or, or like, yeah, just like limiting yourself. Like, so I'm not allowed to use anything except a piano mm. when you yeah, it's not going to sound like niche yeah, from nowhere. Exactly. So we're trying to we're trying to do that actually, just limit what we put in there and make it a bit more concise. But then I think we do want to, you know, try and uh, just develop a bit. Mm. Uh, it's it's tricky to explain. It's um, our, at the moment we're looking at arrangements, and and I think we probably were a bit conservative trying to like put this together i think there's there's we didn't explore enough so we're just we're just looking at that at the moment so then so is this like the organ thing is not dark star that's like a it, it kind of is it kind of is but it's like it's us composing for james mcfinney mm. and uh yeah and we so just is it, is it organ yeah. like church organ yeah, yeah oh nice yeah yeah and where will it be performed like, where's that? um Minneapolis nice. for a, for a festival called uh, Liquid Music. So we've been doing quite a lot of that uh, stuff with him, and then that's led to us. We did something at, um, in Islington called Organ Reframed with him with, with the LCO as well. Mm. So then and then that kind of led to us doing something at the Great Escape next month with just the LCO. Mm. So we're just writing that as well. Uh, that's mad. Yeah, that's, I mean that's like completely unrelated to. <laughs> making some electronic music really it's like, yeah what? yeah we've kind of we 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 had like a couple of years where we were interest after the foam island record we were we kind of got into working with um a guy called kieran mcgat who's like a director and uh he's a mate of mine and we just started started just kind of doing like little projects with him mm. we did like um a load of workshops in a youth centre in Liverpool. Uh, we made a load of wicked stuff with a, gr a group of kids up there and he filmed it all. And then we did this thing called Safe, which is like, we chopped up a load of like old jungle breaks and just put them through loads of pedals and then scored like like his archive. And he, uh, we did that at the Tate and stuff like that. So we've been, we've been thinking quite laterally rather than, 
oh, we're going to just tour, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and then record and then tour. I guess that, that gives you a good excuse for not having released an album. Yeah, we've, we've actually made a lot of music, yeah, but yeah. We just, it's just not where people would It's probably, not album music, yeah, it's yeah. project music. Yeah. That's, where is that sort of, how's that come about? Because that's quite, it's all quite specific and like, especially like writing scores as well, which you've done like, um, those are not things that everyone does, do you know what I mean? I think it came about because we probably struggled in that cycle of recording uh, promo touring type thing. And we, we are slow. Mm. So, um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's where it, I think it just, we, we were like, well, we, we want to do stuff, but it might not necessarily be dark star just yet, you know? Mm. So, and also there's a, there's a bit more of a freedom there, I think, mm. you know, you don't have to like, think about are oh, the chords or the bass line perfect is Aiden sounding good on this one do you know mm. what I mean it's more like yeah that, that sounds good we'll, 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 we'll work with it do you play the piano have you got no I'm you not, dexter, uh, does Aiden as well kind of yeah he's, he, he knows his way around it but he's not he's not like a uh, like a player mm. it's all like the, that, that, that's another thing the way we put it together if someone was sat in a room with us I think they'd be like this is intense. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> it's just, it's like, ah, oh man, it's, it, it is really intense, actually. It's just Aiden and me, who, and then we're kind of like, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't fucking work. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and then just like, yeah. It's basically yeah. like the monkeys on a typewriter <laughs> thing, isn't it? <laughs> but yeah, he's, he's incredibly, like, it, but his parts that he comes up with are, are wicked. That, and then, and then like I'll kind of react off that and you know help him out a little bit but yeah mm. it's very it's it's an interesting process it's literally trial and error yeah yeah like yeah yeah and that's what that's another thing like going back to what I was saying about you know us trying to make it a bit more enjoyable that side of things is, is what we're we're looking at now as in to challenge yourself or to not stress yourself out as much <laughs> both yeah, yeah. It's a challenge mainly though because yeah. it's it, whatever at some point or another when you when when we're making a record you know it's gonna just be like hell yeah you know it is just stress so you just may as well embrace that you know what I mean <laughs> suffering for your art yeah yeah should it this it doesn't have to be a stress or does it I mean is that literally part of the process or something I think like, it does it does have to be or is that just how it comes about or? I think it does yeah I think I I think if it if you don't go through it. I, I'm not sure you've got it with what you, mm. you were looking for, for yeah. us anyway. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. think there's there's always been a time in, in each of the records where I've been like, mm, I'm not, I don't feel like myself, you know? And I think it, it gets, it does get, um, it does get intense, but it's a record. It's kind of meant to, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's, no one said it was easy. It's a little bit like giving birth by the time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's we always make a like we always have this little thing where once we finish it, we we're like, oh, this is like our little Christmas, you know, like being able to just be like, oh, we did it. Even and to be honest, like because we are that slow, with no like, there's, I think people just aren't uh, anticipating that much from us right mm. now, or maybe I don't know if ever, but. Um, I think it is just for our own sake. Like a lot of it is just like, oh, you know, let's let's just try it. Let's just you mean trying new things. Or yeah, what, and what just like completing things? things and be like, yeah. you know, we did it. Like, like let's, you know, have a beer or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're. It is. It's an interesting. It's it's interesting. It's an interesting process, and also the way things are moving with like you know streaming and and how slow we are. It it is like. I don't think we've 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 never been so aware of the fact that it it really is like what what is going to happen to this once it's finished, you know? To be honest, will anyone hear it? Or, or yeah, what? yeah, basically, I'm sure people will, but it's not going to it's it is going to be a very like it, it, it's just it's just a bizarre feeling to finish something and then not quite understand what happens right. to it. I think in in today you know well yeah no one really under well i don't know people i mean a lot of people are listening to music on spotify and streaming services and youtube and stuff so it's getting consumed but i don't know how you necessarily like make stuff fly and become successful via that and i don't also know 
how well the discovery tools are all working. But personally speaking, I mean, at least talking about Spotify, do you feel like the algorithms get a lot of it right, but there is a concern that you're sort of, you're leaving the kind of the new DJs are like algorithms. That's mm. weird. And it feels like, but there are, while there are obviously some, there are still DJs and human tastemakers and stuff. I don't know. Yeah. I, Spotify just, I don't know. It's like, it's just really, I just find it really boring. <laughs> you know, it, I, it, 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 I don't, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, it's quite confusing though to, to think about, Oh, well, who 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 is going to listen to this you know mm. if is it because it, it is basically an algorithm determining where else it goes to right yeah so then are we just like <clears throat> it's, it's just a centralized streaming platform that you're kind of paying to access really and I did oh, i heard that there were people who were making shorter tunes because it gets you more plays on yeah, Spotify yeah I've, and heard more money. I've heard all this yeah I mean, that's weird. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, that's logical as well, but it's also weird and creepy and sad. Yeah, yeah. I, so I, I, we try and just put all that out of our head and, and do... Uh, with this, what we've got, this batch of material, what we're working on now, I think we're we're like, you know what, we're just going to like do exactly what we want with it and, you know, at least then it ticks that box when it comes out. Mm. Like all you can do is just make the best music yeah. you can. I yeah. think that tends to work as well. Yeah. <laughs> that's all you can do really yeah. you leave like everything else to warp records basically yeah what about um bits of kit favorite bits of kit i mean we know we we're talking about eventide and stuff it's kind of curious for your sort of and you said you're like non-technical or you're non you say you said you're non-musical yeah i'm not 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 that doesn't like seem I'm, strictly accurate to yeah me. no but like it's not there's no i've never learned an instrument or anything yeah, like yeah. that but yeah yeah, I'm not, you know, I can, like, knock things together. Um, <laughs> I just thought so. Yeah. Um, Favourite bits of kit? Mm, I, yeah. I mean, I can't... Even Tide, I think, really did change the way I kind of produced stuff. I just don't get why it's, mm. like, people just... It, it feels so underused. Like, what what aspect, like, delays or pitch shifting or, like... Just, like, and also, like, I've been, like, going to... I've been doing, a, like, sometimes I get asked to, like, uh, talk about some of the stuff we've done, mm. at, like, you know, certain lectures or whatever. And yeah, when when you get there, some dude's always like, oh, let me show you around, you know, like, a uni or something. Mm. And I'm always like, oh, you haven't got any even time. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. it's so much fun. Yeah, yeah. And like, again, with uh, with Foam Island, the, the last record, what I, I was just like, I was that, like, I was just hammering like the pitch factor so much mm. that I'd have like an MPC direct into the pitch factor. And I was like, just like pitching, like pitching drums, like two octaves up. Yeah. No, no, like very little delay and just like, yeah, it's just, it's just s- wicked. Straight pitches. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, it's just, it just immediately it might like, it might just like make, make something happen. Yeah. So that, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm into that. I'm, I'm into that kind of like tactile way of like messing with harmony. Mm. Um, so they, they, they're, they're, they're the, that's my like go to. Um, we've got a Juno that Aiden loves. Yeah. Um, do you don't play it or is it? Aiden? Yeah, yeah, like I mess around with it. I like I like just making like I just put hold on and then like go through like certain chords and then just go create like blissful like yeah, mega yeah, chords. I love yeah, all that. Yeah. 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 I am I'm, I'm kinda up for like, you know, trying to live score or something just <laughs> like that and it, cause it's so cool. Um Yeah. What um, else? Um I think MPC uh, uh, 2500, I think, in my opinion, is like like the go-to kind of drum sampler type mm. thing. I think the way Akai have like laid that out and how informative and intuitive it is, is just sweet. Mm. Yeah, I think for composing or for both. Like, I think you yeah. can once once you start like getting your head into it, the way they suggest you work, I think is is good. Mm. And I, I I always appreciate that where you're like, oh, that's why they've done that, and then yeah. maybe that's a better way than I was thinking, you know. Mm. Mm. So yeah, that's that's cool. Um, 
What else? I, I think some plugins are really interesting. That I uh, Isotope Iris I'm using. Mm. That's good. So you Iris can is I, like the vocal. Or no, is it no, no it's spectral? It's the sampler. It's the yeah, spe- that's spectral that's it. sampler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can like isolate frequencies yeah. and stuff. So we've right. been making low we've got like a like our own library in that now that we've we've spent a lot of time with and it's just it's just really good. And then we process that. And mm. the reverb and that's really good as well. Yeah. Um and I think that Valhalla Ubermod yes. plugin is is like for fifty dollars. Is that Ubermod's the blue? One? I, yeah, I get yeah. it confused with the it's quite ultra modulator, but it, I should know it because I've literally caned it more than any other plugin. But I can never remember the name. But he's got like a free modulation plugin as well as Ubermod, which is like fifty bucks. Yeah, yeah. It's just that's that's like even tired, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. He just is from that kind of classy sort of world. Like yeah, the, yeah. Uh, I really like the Valhalla Room as well. I've not heard that. I'm not just rooms that. like, yeah, it's a room reverb. It's like an algorithmic room. But what it does really well is is really mega long, lush, sort of super ultra lush. So if you run synth through it, it gives you that kind of, you know, infinite, just gorgeous, huge, colossal sound. Yeah, yeah, that's that, I'll check that out. And then obviously the Digitact, which I think is mm. the best thing they've done. On yeah. Electron. Yeah, I just bought one of those like a month ago. They're good. Yeah. <laughs> that's really good. They're like up there for me. I, I really like the envelopes. I like the the way you can just mess with it. Um, I, to be honest, I've messed with like a few of their things. They, they're all right. They're like, I think. Like, Electron. Yeah. yeah. They're like the Octa track. I've, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> How so? It's well, just, just like nails to use. In the, yeah, and also just like, what's the point? Well, I don't. Well, see, I don't. I don't know the answer to that. Except I know that the people who've fully drunk the Octatrack Kool Aid are like, this is the greatest piece of equipment that's ever been made by hand. Maybe I'm missing human. something. Yeah. Well, it's really also <laughs> hard as hell to use because it's got. Like when you say that someone has dictated a, a kind of workflow, there's some mad space cadet uh, electron that's like, you know, on another h- higher plane of like existence who conceived the way that it works. Because any time I've tried to use one, I'm just like, what? But apparently it is amazing. It is like a hybrid of like, it's something like, what is that my mate was saying? He was like, it's like having 12 digitacts. Or whatever in yeah, one box. I'm, I'm not buying it. Like, <laughs> whatever. Like, yeah, good luck with that. I know. <laughs> well, I mean, that's what the good thing about the Digitact is. It's easy. Like, yeah. and it's very immediate. Yeah, and, yeah. Like, it sounds wicked. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. Like the filter and like the distortion. It's like it is good. They've got. They've put some really nice little samples in there as well. Mm. Yeah. So yeah, we're, I've been using that a lot. Um, what else? Oh, the auto pedals. No, the, um, like, yeah. What? I've got a reverb and delay. Is it the bim and bam and boom or whatever? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the, the biscuit. Biscuit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I've, I've only messed with the reverb and delay. Yeah, I just sold them, actually, unfortunately. Uh, but they, they're all over what we've been doing recently, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah so that, they're really good. You can get like nice pedals and processing basically. Yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. they're wicked. Yeah, yeah. They're wicked. Um so yeah, just just been like that's that's that tend that tend to be like the basic setup. So um, it's all, all quite like um it's not it's not like any you know rarities. Yeah, like, yeah, no, not at all. Like diggers paradise. Yeah, no, completely. Like that. Well that's what like when I saw your studio, it's like there's not much stuff. Yeah. Because like, yeah. you don't need much stuff. Yeah. Like you really don't. But then also as well, because we might go with someone like Lex or Richard, that's when, all right, maybe we can, we'll have things in mind, like our lines in mind where we're like, that isn't going to get on the record. So we need to like go somewhere where that is going to be a better sound, you know? As in like the thing you're recording is just just not good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do that a lot. As in re-record things. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's a funny one, like making records at home versus in a studio. I don't know, it's like, not everyone's got the luxury. I don't know, I mean, I've never really done that. And I've, I've always just like treated a demo as basically just the final thing. I've redone elements and things like that, but mm. I don't know. Yeah, what would like, yeah, what does the studio truly give you that you can't do at home? I think, like, I think 
I like going into a room when just like being able to turn it up. Yeah. You know, and I think that's uh that's underestimated that 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 freedom. I think that's like a really important thing to be able to like gauge it like at uh stupid levels for me. <laughs> but um yeah, so that's something when we haven't got a space or like it's getting a bit you know indulgence for other space particularly in london uh it, yeah yeah that's one thing i miss at times but you know when we've got when we've got a space that's something as well that i always think oh shit i've been been missing this yeah yeah just actually the vibe of turning it up loud yeah it's just stuff like that this, it's interesting isn't it where uh, my mate will was in a studio in uh hornsey uh the other week mm. and for some reason i like we've worked in quite a few and not many like i walk in and be like yeah all right like let's mess about but it, nothing's really grabbed me but i walked into this what this guy had done and i immediately i was like he's nailed this like yeah it, yeah, it was just like this kind of mm. like rectangular room had a couch he'd like he'd had like a good monitor and set up and stuff it's just so, something about the way he'd done it i was like this is i could really you know get into Ooh. some a space like this what was it then was it just it was it was tricky to say because i that you go into places that uh that I, like i always find them a bit cold you know mm. like i always like lived in studios mm. like richards was great so i imagine it looks like a sort of junk shop yeah like richards that. is like yeah you know there's a lot going on in there and uh yeah immediately i think you're like oh you know we can we can get something going quick here and it's going to be very different than any other room yeah. anywhere else yeah, yeah yeah only this room will do let yeah. us do this yeah but this other place in hornsey it was just a bit more compact it sounded really good and i just remember thinking i you know there's something about this i can't put my finger on but it, it feels like i could get a result mm. here so do you have a space at home yeah uh, do, do you live you live in london yeah yeah, yeah yeah i live in south london um we've got we've got with we've, we've got a favor going on at the moment uh so yeah we're just trying to there's a place in soho post-production studio and uh we're, we're messing around in there we uh just every now and again and as in you have to like every now and again take all your stuff down there you don't no 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 we've got like uh it's a friend of aiden's and he's he's just kind of, they're, they're i think they're about to move right so they're like you know just come and use it yeah yeah it's amazing and, and but we just we've got like a little um ua quad we've been using yeah, and yeah. just plug that in and then and just mess around in there but yeah we've got like just a skeleton set up juno mm. and uh the digitac really yeah mm. but that's that's kind of what we're, we're using at the moment yeah, yeah. Oh, i need to do some proper digitac music actually <laughs> so i've got i still need to really work it out i've not kind of a, like the base level of entry with it and i've not actually sampled anything into it yet yeah but i know you can do stuff where you can like assign lfos to like scrub the sample time you know so it's actually moving so you can almost like play in a chord progression and it'll scrub through and play the melody that, you know that's I mean? interesting yeah, yeah. so like have a can, look at that you can set up sort of almost like self-playing things where you just hit and then you've got the conditional triggers where you can make it so there's like an algorithmic chance that a note will happen and stuff so right you, right i think you can do it with midi as well so you could you could have it so it is almost like a little, like it just improvises on the Juno. Do you know yeah, I mean? so yeah. If you Juno, you have MIDI on it. I can't remember if you've modded it, but no, I don't think we are. We've just messed about with uh, what it what it is there. We, the way we record is like uh, we'll we'll get a pattern and then throw it into Pro Tools and then process. Hmm. So yeah, we, we'll we'll take it out of Digitac fairly quick. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you're not making whole tunes in the Digitax then? All oh, right. Okay. No, nah, but I it's like a to be, I did I did try um I did take it up north with me and I took every stem out of this track that we quite like at the moment and tried to try to play it live with some overdrive on yeah, it. Yeah. Just to see if like it would what the finish would be like. That was pretty cool. It sounded it, good. Yeah, it sounded yeah. wicked. Yeah. It's capable. Yeah. It's I, good. Was, I was thinking of using it as like a, a way of doing, because I'm doing like live stuff with a modular, but I can't always take that. And it's like, could I do like a compact like 
you know, build a set in the Digitac and play it through. I mean, it's definitely capable of doing that. Yeah, yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. The only shame is that it can't do polyphonic MIDI. So I had this idea of having like, like a polysynth and then just drums and doing like a kind of blissed out sort of ambient dancey thing. But you can't play polyphonic MIDI out of the thing. I was like, yeah. Oh, like, it's only like um, monophonic with chords. Okay. So it could send polyphonic MIDI, but they've intentionally limited it because then they make you buy like the Octatrack because that's got like full polyphonic MIDI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So bastards. Yeah, I, I, I don't think we'll get. Uh, that's not really what we're going to use it for. I don't think so. Yeah, we'll even if it's a live setup or just even in this record, it'll be like that's where like certain samples and I really like f putting vocals in there though and just messing with like the uh, the sequencer and pitch. Mm. So we've been doing some interesting stuff with like some harmonies that I just kind of like fly off into the background where I'm re-triggering stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. So something that I was sort of asked everyone on this podcast it's yeah. like a bit of a feature is um what is the future of like it's a bit more of a technical question but like it can be whatever you interpret it to be but the future of music making like as in like what would help you the most like that doesn't exist or could exist mm. that's a tricky one <laughs> um Ah oh, man, I don't. That's that's tough. I'm not sure. It's it's kind of there, isn't it? It's all mm. there. So well, yeah, yeah. It, it could just be your own ability. <laughs> it could just yeah. Be oh yeah. If it if it's down, down to me, like God, yeah. um, all sorts of things. I think I'd like to. I think going back to the M the MPC two thousand five hundred. I think I think people are missing a trick with like the way you get into things. How like, do you mean? Uh, As in how you make things on that. Yeah, yeah. I think I think that I think some things that I have messed with in the past or visit and and kind of like discard are, are the things that uh, leave me cold from like a workflow point of view. And I, I just think Akai always nail it. So as in it, it's always helping you along the process and you don't like let things slip or how do you mean exactly like? Yeah, yeah. So like, you know, if I've got like, a, if I want to do something and I've got a process in mind and I feel like, oh, to get to, from A to B, I've got to do like work this way. But what I found with, what I find with Akai is that they, they show you a route that, that they're just like, it's just, better because then it then opens another door and you're like oh well i can actually do something more now with this right yeah so i i always thought the way they kind of their sequencer in the 2500 is really underrated mm. so like and the way and just the way you can record in and then it's just really quick yeah. and like and and you get you get to a point where you're like you're starting to like perform with it yeah and i think that's that's really cool actually so from what from what you're trying to from in my from my point of view what i was doing is oh, i'm gonna i need like help with this as in live i need like a, a lot of track running from the archive mm. and then and then you start kind of working through that and then and then it it shows you a way where you're like actually i can run a lot of this off triggering it live mm and it, it's just kind of cool the way i think it it pushes you to to go from uh you know maybe i can rely on track to being like no you can do this with with this piece of gear because it's like so informative mm. i like the idea that it actually pushes you to like perform a little bit totally right? so it's not just the machine taking care of it it's totally. like the machine allowing you to be and it, it's one of those things as well where you you're like oh, i'm gonna do, i can I just love messing with this now, mm. you know, like you, you just start it. Then it informs like the, the sh like whatever performance you're, you're messing around with. So yeah, it, I just got really good with that on the news from nowhere thing. Mm. So like that, that's like a, that, that record is a lot of depth sonically. And it got to the point where I was like, we stripped it back first and then 
we all started getting pretty good with these the, the NPCs and then it just build up mm. like we, we we were able to have quite a uh accurate kind of um reference to the record live at the end of the yeah, tour yeah. you know like you actually could perform it yeah so i think it, it, just intuition with gears like maybe overlooked a bit although i think the digitact is pretty sweet for that but yeah i just think the way they do it it opens doors mm. I've never messed around with an NPC. Like, They're, well, they've been around that long. That when I bought it, I was like, uh, it, "It's going to do what I think it's going to do." And then when, once I got into it, I'm just like, "Nah, this is. I get it. This is like these are. I, I get why people love them." Mm. Yeah. So I think, uh, yeah, I did love. I did love that. I I used to. I used to have like it's. I think it was six outs on there, and I used to have four. To, like a stereo out going into the pitch factor and a mm. stereo out going into the time factor and then I'd have my beats coming out of the main out so I was kind of like triggering everything live and then and then like just you know going crazy with mm. samples and, yeah, yeah. and uh, the even time like a delay yeah it's wicked man that was the most fun I've ever had live actually that's good yeah. giving yourself like yeah I mean because it is hard if you've got to play the record then you've got to play those elements but those are really jammable effects and yeah. they don't like they don't click or any do anything weird when no, you they're turn solid them. so that like as in so that they're meant to be like wiggled yeah yeah yeah, yeah. i used to really hammer them <laughs> wiggle them. yeah 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 and uh well, i think we repaired like they just get repaired and repaired they they, they, they will last forever yeah. those things yeah i think the my the on the the pitch factor now the um the you know the like the even tide kind of plastic bit on the front yeah. that says it's an even type that's yeah. gone it, yeah, yeah, so yeah. it just looks like this weird eastern block gray like <laughs> machine nice. yeah it looks it's completely wiped yeah, off yeah. on your hand but i'm yeah. so but that that what you said then about it, it, things being jammable that the mpc 2500 going into those two pedals is just like the, the, the one yeah because you can just you can you're, you're like you're changing everything all the time mm. you know all the compositions are just like Oh, well, we can just jam this for however long we want. Mm, yeah. Oh, man, I need to really get the time factor and pitch factor now. I had, like, borrowed them, and funnily enough, one of the most interesting things I did was have them in series going through a, or being processing a Juno 60. So Juno, then time factor, then pitch factor in a line. Yeah, like a daisy chain. Yeah, yeah. so then you get, time, you get pitch factored time factor, and it's like... It starts to build up these, like, kind of um, just, I don't know, like, angelic crystal sort of rolling yeah. soundscapes. Yeah, that, like, cr that crystal yeah, preset crystals. is just nuts, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like we hammered that. Yeah, hammered it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Richard always makes a joke about that, but because we did just drench that record mm. with that. But it's so good. Yeah, yeah. And it is that, yeah, it does give that kind of, it, it makes everything sound, like, elated and kind of beautiful but you can also use those like uh, yes you will have done like you can if you use the effects just very subtly you can really add like animation and like on like hi-hats and yeah, stuff yeah, just yeah. with a little bit of you know one cent up two cents down you can get like kind yeah. of stereo animation and well stuff. going back to the that setup i used that time uh, i'd have like a set of pads that were kind of percussion and i'd just that they'd be going straight into the uh, the delay. What is the delay called again? The blue time, one? Uh, time factor. Time factor. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah, you just I kind of it, uh, you just tap, you know, to yeah, one, yeah. And tap the tempo it, exactly. So everything was just like yeah, nothing was programmed. It it got to the point where it was just that much fun, and the Akai had enabled me to be like, oh, you can you know you can totally do this another way. Mm. So yeah, I think I think that would I think more things that enable you to like think beyond which probably happens all the time with mm. gear but i just don't see yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just about having the thing you connect with yeah i mean it's like it doesn't have to like everyone's different like and you know some people need a keyboard so i can't play a keyboard very well i don't know yeah it's yeah it's just it's cool like i like how electronic music just does present lots of different ways of of arriving at the same thing do yeah you know what i mean and it's like whatever you uh, we we used Ableton after that for because on the Foam Island, like some of the, those performances, and 
Yeah, just like didn't do, didn't do it for me. It's not as good. <laughs> but then, if you were you playing like the vocal samples and stuff, like all of the like voices in Fro Island Live and. Um, no, feels- we we did a very like we we kind of just like stripped it back, so it was it was like the core kind of instrumentation, and then Aiden's kind of vocal effects. Yeah, Fro Island was a tricky one to do live. Yeah, because like, that's like yeah, it feels. When I listen to it, it's like feels very. It's like a real concept record, but like not in a bad way. Just like it's yeah. just that idea, like with the voices and the sort of. It's funny, like you know, electronic music to me. I mean, I speak entirely for myself. I'm like, I, when I write music, I just I'm just writing music just for its own sake, and I'm being led by whatever. There's an emotion, and there's 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 certainly like tone to the things I'm making but I, I personally never am like it this this ambient piano piece is about my mum yeah, or something it's yeah, not like, yeah, that's yeah. not what I'm thinking I'm just like this ambient piano piece <laughs> is somber and really interesting it might <laughs> yeah. make you think of your mum but yeah uh, do you know what I mean but whereas but you were actually you know it's like these quotes about the north and mm. about life and I mean what were you I mean this is a bit of a sort of such a journalist question but like like what were you actually trying to what are you trying to say? What are you I trying think, to say? I think it was uh I think it was a little bit misinterpreted what we were trying to do, to be honest. I think we just wanted it to be quite like uh observational. Yeah. And then we you know, certain like once you start playing it to people, people are like, Well, this is political. Like, blah, political blah blah blah. Like yeah, a, and you're like I mean what's I just think I, I wish I wish I was a bit more steadfast back then to be like, Oh, I think it should be a bit more of a peripheral viewpoint rather than overtly. To be honest, and you're like, almost, we're not trying to say too much. We're just trying to reference, yeah, the, yeah. reference I think that, that, that I part think, of the world. But then you you just get caught up in like, you know, weird conversations about what oh, this record could be. You know, you're like, well, yeah, yeah, it could be. And maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think listening back to it, uh, it I think... I remember my intentions at the time, I think were more like, oh, you know, this should just kind of be a viewpoint of like, uh, yeah, like a peripheral viewpoint rather than um, trying to say something, you know, that it doesn't quite say anyway. It's, it is it is a peripheral viewpoint. Do you mean, I think it, there's not trying to say it's like It's, it's like just... snatches of moments, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's not like, it's not, it's, it's just like, um, I think, when we were up there doing news from nowhere I remember thinking uh, it, I remember writing the lyrics and thinking that the lyrics are just about like going to shop or mm. you know like Monday moments which I always really like the thought of you know trying to portray and then uh, yeah that 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 was just a, a an added layer the mm. format or like a I suppose just more just more of a concept attached to it that um that articulates it a bit more clearly but yeah i think it is more it's meant to sit in the background most mm. of all our, all our stuff is always meant to be like it, it kind of just there i don't want it to be like rammed down anyone's okay. throat or anything yeah. like that i think like if you're into it you're into it if yeah you're not, then keep it moving. i was just like yeah i was kind of listening to actually i was listening to it and i was just like leaving wakefield i was like I was like, this, this, this music's very sort of, I literally was like, <laughs> it feels very distant and sort of like, it feels like it's from a magical place. And then I suddenly had a moment, I was like, I'm fucking literally looking at Wakefield right now, which is where it's basically from. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I was like, well, that's odd, isn't it? Like, Yeah, yeah. I, like, I think um, it's a weird, it's a, it's a, it, it took a lot, that record, but it was, again, it was like, it was pretty cool to make. Um and just trying to piece together, you know what I mean? A lot of it's like re- really collaged, so mm. I quite like that as well. And I I thought that's where we would go next, like more so, like in, in like maybe leave the kind of uh, conventional arrangements alone and, and go and, in, and like just have like pieces. Even more PC. Yeah, yeah, but I don't, I don't, we just haven't done that. I think, yeah. you know, it's, it's quite a good idea in theory, but I don't think it'd be, Mm. you can never tell can you if it's just like is it a cop out <laughs> you know what I mean it might be yeah so we're, we, you know we 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 didn't and I think it was the right thing to do actually like listening to what we've got 
I love that. Um, what is that? I now can't think of exactly what he says, but on Foam Island, who's the guy where he's talking about the street? Is like, this street is my street. This oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a guy called Daryl. He was cool. He was like, yeah, we went to a part of Huddersfield, the, the way they call it, the Gaza Strip. It's funny. It's great, great. That is amazing. So how did that work? You literally, how, did you know these people? Or just, well, we kind of like, like met a few people when we were doing, when we were up there recording the, the record, the News From Nowhere record. And then I, I always thought we missed the trick, like being there and not like delving a bit more. Mm. So when, when it came around to getting this together, I, I started talking to some people up there again and just, just being like, you know, oh, this is maybe we can do something a bit more expansive, um, and 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 see where that goes. And uh, yeah, like just just met a load of like people that you know became friends and mm. really cool people. And that, like he was a friend of a friend, and we just went and like just sat there, you know, and drank some rum and just took <laughs> yeah, it easy yeah, all day. Like, yeah. Recorded. Yeah. What is his little, what's his catchphrase he says? It's like, do you know what I mean? But it's, no, it's not. What's he say? I mean, I haven't, you know what, I, I, haven't, <laughs> I, I very rarely listen to yeah. it, so I probably should have listened to it before. I haven't heard no, it in no, a long fine. time. But it's, it's, he's got like a little, like, a little, like, tick that he says like this little like do you know what i mean do you know what i mean it's not that though yeah it's very particular and it's like i do know yeah, yeah yeah and then but as well like, i love that it's the very last thing it's just like at the very end he just says it and then the song ends yeah it's like it's a highlight and it was it's actually really funny like yeah yeah he was a, he was a great guy everyone connected to that there was a guy called up there called benai that kind of accommodated a lot of that stuff and he was he was he helped a lot and um a guy called uh dom and uh yeah they they we met like some really interesting uh people that were only too happy to just like you know get involved and yeah, yeah. you know it is and it wasn't it wasn't just like uh you know i'm gonna record a load of people and then you know I, I was up there for a while and just like you know going to parties and everything and just mm. like going around the houses watching films and that with them it was it was interesting i, I kind of got lost doing it a bit it's but, quite good though yeah. get you into a certain headspace yeah definitely and i think from that i think we we i think we were like you know because we did a few workshops and stuff up there and and uh we did like this this kind of event up there where we got like people to come and talk and and like you know get everyone that was involved on the record to come and like just set just like say their piece and stuff like that it was like a little cool event in this mill in huddersfield and then um we uh from that i think that's when we were like you know maybe we should think about you know other projects like in that vein yeah and, yeah yeah so we the one so notable the one was this thing in liverpool, liverpool. Yeah, yeah that was like that, that seems was, amazing as well yeah yeah and we've that 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 the music isn't no one's heard that we did we did a performance um at the barbican with it um but I've always made, you know, I'm always kind of like looking to try and somehow get it out. There's one track actually called um, Escalators that Aiden made with three girls up there and in Liverpool. And uh, randomly, uh, Kieran's friend, sorry, um, the guy that films all our stuff, Kieran McGat, he passed it on to his friend, uh, Misha, who's got a show on NTS radio. So right. she starts playing that track on NTS. Then she starts playing it at her like party that she does called PDA, which is a really good party. And yeah. then that kind of like is just like kind of got this little scene, scene around that yeah, track, yeah. and they're going to release it. Amazing. So yeah, that's 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 an interesting. Uh, yeah, I think I, we really got into like that. Like maybe we can. That that was like over the course of like six months in Liverpool, just going to a youth center and then setting up our studio and then just like recording everything. It was, it was very much like Foam Island, but in Liverpool yeah, yeah. And, and- What do you actually do with them? Just like literally you sing? You know, you like- get like, we got like, what we did is we were like, okay, so it's gonna be, what, what, if you're a kid, right? And you're, if you're coming in and seeing two strangers, like, but that are asking you to engage, do you need like an incentive? So what we did is we got like anything that was tactile. So we had like some APCs set up with like, mm. I, I sampled like loads of like, um, 
kind of radio drops. Right. You know, like really cheesy, like kind of explosions and stuff like oh, that. Right, and right, then yeah. like, and then like loads of 808s and, and then just was like, come and check this out. And then they were just like immediately on clips it. And yeah, yeah, yeah. And just, do, 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 exactly. Yeah, so yeah. we just started making tunes with them. And then what we did, we got those, have you seen those Zoom pens? Like literally it's a pen. No. Yeah. So we were just like, we handed those out and then they went into, it was like, um, it was a Romani community that mm. had come from the Czech Republic. Mm. So they'd kind of had this culture within a culture in Liverpool. And I didn't know, I didn't know that existed. Mm. So, um, yeah, we just, we just set up like a studio there every week and they, they'd just come and play loads of stuff. Like all the lads would rap, loads of the girls would sing. Yeah. We'd put on little discos and stuff for them, like hiring like these weird, like school disco lights. Amazing. Yeah. And then just record it all. Yeah. So we made a little film with them and then we, and then unfortunately the, the people that um, enabled us to do that, they organized a big kind of like performance in Liverpool in this kind of like old uh, train rail track yard that's disused. And they got like in a big, stage and PA and we were gonna we were gonna like show everyone that everything we'd collaged mm. and um it rained. Oh no. We got rained off. Got rained off. I had yeah. to like couldn't do it. Yeah so you know and then you know it's just it was just a, good, a really really good project. Mm. Uh, and then we did an installation with them in a gallery and like we we sampled ev like loads of stuff they were doing and put some tunes together then mapped it over a keyboard and then Every time you press the key, Keir, one a, a, a clip Kieran had filmed would come up on this kind of wall, and yeah. so people would just go up and push yeah, it. And yeah, like yeah, yeah. And then like right? it'd yeah, be yeah. like almost like an interactive film. That's awesome. Yeah, it was good. And it's like yeah, doing community like things, things with kids. It's like that is something I'd love to do at some point. Just like act, like I don't know. I think there's I think there's more um, interest in it. It's it's quite tricky to like keep it going yeah you know do you mean to keep them interested or no 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 more period? so like facilitating it you yeah. know what i mean it's uh it's it's almost like i think the thing that becomes apparent when you do it is like ah oh, this is this is amazing and it's also should be a full-time job yeah you know what i mean for someone yeah not necessarily you or like no i mean it's definitely it's definitely something i uh I think I would like to do. It's yeah. just I've also, you know, tr got to try and make a record. <laughs> so it's Those it's a tricky it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. It yeah. is amazing though. Mm. Yeah, I was playing with this um, this you know Tim Exile. It's like a sort of drum and bass guy, but so it's, was it? Well, I think he's on Warp. Not sure. Anyway, but he makes um, a lot of stuff on native instruments, doesn't he? Yes, it? yeah, he makes like the mouth and the finger and stuff. Yeah. Um but I was playing with this he's got this new thing called Endless, which is like I'm I'm plugging it basically, but it's just because it's really interesting. And actually I think for it as an accessibility, like a thing that anyone who's interested in electronic music and wants to just like sing and mash up, like you can basically like it's like WhatsApp but for music and yeah. so you can basically make a beat on the little thing and it's all in tempo synced and then you sort of hit loop and then your beat is looping and then someone else can like be in your jam and then like you add can to it. you can then add in a bass line yeah. and it pops up on my thing and then i can it's actually what you what you how you're working with aiden like yeah, and it's yeah. literally you hand over it like you do a bit i do a bit you do a bit and then he's got effects so you, then you can like mash up layers or the whole thing and sort of like crush and reduce it into something else. And like, and I was walking, I was literally walking down like Whitechapel High Street and I was, I was like having a jam with Tim Exile oh, and right. I, I was doing some bits and then he would like hop in and do something. And I went past someone playing the bongos and to hit record and then like, he was like incorporating the bongos. So I was like, this is legitimately really quite good. And I was yeah. like, those sort, that sort of, that's probably what we would need for those kinds of things. A, to happen on a more regular basis, like the collaborative thing, but also... Tactile stuff, just immediate. Just an immediate and yeah. easy for someone who is not necessarily musical, technically minded. Like well, it, that's yeah. the thing about it. We, what, we, what we did, actually, we got a, lo a load of iPads and someone told us about uh, an app called Keezy. 
Easy. Never tried it's like that, a loop yeah. thing. It's quick. Yeah, and yeah. It, it it does something similar to that, but yeah. it's it's in one thing. So we got like that going quick. So there was a lot going on straight away, and I think that you know the the talent is just off the chain. Yeah, you know what I mean. And then uh, yeah, you just have to. We it's just special. have to kind of like uh, refine it and try and like shape it into, yeah, like, yeah. and then kind of teach them about like structure. So yeah, a lot of the a lot of the guys were like really good rappers, but they would just like spit forever. Right? Yeah, they, yeah. they wouldn't like, like right, that'll, yeah, that'll yeah. do. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah, so uh, yeah, that, 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 but yeah, you're right. That, those things are really cool to engage and, and get, get people in, I think. Mm. Yeah, it's like, that's, I, cause I wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to start in a sense of like how much of the, like if it's a young person who's not, you really want to engage them quickly. I, I, I don't know how I would do that. Like, I think you know what, the I mean? like, what I found is like going through Four Mile and then, then Liverpool. And then we did, we, I went, we went to Cape Town as well for something mm, kind of similar, but it was like more kind of interview stuff. And then that would uh, like turn into something. But what I find, what I found with it was like, if you record someone straight away, their voice and then play it back to them immediately, they're like, really? Oh, that's in that toy yeah, sound like that. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, then classic. and then you start like sampling it and then, you know, putting it on a bed of like whatever, like a beat or whatever, and then immediately they're just like, Well, I'm part of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. I have heard that someone saying that like in fact actually I did do a thing where um I did like a modular demo uh, like every year at this deer shed festival in near like actually near where my folks are in like in North Yorkshire. Um, I have like my modular, like live modular synth and I basically get kids to come and play it, and, like show them what to do to like get a beat going. Uh, but one of the best ones was where I've got like a sampling module where you can sing in and it like just grabs the voice and to hear exactly as you say, there's a like an elation, like hearing your own voice yeah. become part of the music. It's like, ah, like also this, yeah, the spooky thing of being like chipmunked and sort of, yeah, that's just funny. Always funny. Yeah. It always gets like a exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so then you can legitimately make it into something beautiful sounding. Yeah, that, that's what we. So yeah, we just try and set up that way, and then quickly, you know, you're like, well, that's your track now, so yeah, yeah. let's do it again next week. Yeah. Let's that's keep it awesome. going. You know what I mean? And then do you actually do the arrangements and just work like? Do you know what I mean? Do you then finish it off, or do they? To what extent do they? No, I mean with this one because of the. The it got the the tragic part about this project was the 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 grand kind of finale that was meant to we were meant to play everything to yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. that had contributed. It, yeah, yeah. it literally there was a storm in Liverpool and it was just like, and then we did it at the Barbican. But then obviously the logistics of those kids Getting coming down there, there at late and stuff like that. It was it was just yeah, it was a bit. It, the 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 process was amazing and then the, like what what it was meant to happen it didn't quite it wasn't quite executed and that always i always feel a bit weird about those like moments like what what happens now you know what mm. i mean cuz uh we've got we've got like a a bunch of music there that's just wicked yeah you know you, but we did you... we did we did do the installation though that was up in uh up in metal for a month and like anyone could go see it and uh, um some town official from liverpool came and she she like she was really really enthused by it and she was like we need to try and make this have a permanent home you know because it it with it with that community it was like at my mum and dad are from liverpool so mm. i didn't know like that that like uh there was like a, a czech romani community yeah. and it was like they had like a, a a community hub and all this great stuff was coming out of there. You know what I mean? Mm. So it was, I think more people need to like yeah, yeah. be aware of those things. Yeah. yeah. Especially in an era where everyone's like frightened of immigrants and like, <laughs> totally. my God. Like, totally. <laughs> but these are, these are like Scouse Czech kids. It was yeah. like, it was the, what like, a mishmash. Yeah. It was, it was, it was, it was mad. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? Yeah. Yeah. It was great. They were, they, but I think that was like, you know, outside kind of like knowing you've dug into a record, the three records we've done, I think walking away from that, I remember thinking that was definitely worthwhile. That's like one of the best things yeah, you've done. Yeah, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. So, 
yeah, hopefully, I think there'll be more stuff like that that uh, we we do get out of uh, Dark Star in the future. But you know, right now, priority is to like knuckle down. <laughs> Well, good luck, mate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I'm sure it will come up. I mean, you've done it, how I many, three times now? Yeah, no, yeah. more. Yeah. Have you done it? No, we did like yeah. an EP as well. We've yeah. done like singles and stuff like that. But yeah, I think the records are, the, the, you know, the one where you're like, yeah, this is going to, this is kind of going to define what I do for the next year, probably. Mm. Mm. You know, after it's come out, it maybe it won't know this time. You know, you never know this time. It's just, it changes so quick. I, like each record, I, I think when North came out, we did. I think we sold like something silly, like ten thousand CDs in the first couple of weeks, and then, and then news from nowhere. It was the the beginning of kind of Spotify and stuff, and mm. you're like. Well, what's going on here? And then Fall yeah. Island that you're fully in, kind it's of like streaming, yeah, album. yeah. And then this one is even further along. So it's been quite an interesting. Uh, you followed thing the curve sort of, of like yeah, yeah. Yeah, that changing yeah. music world, yeah. Yeah, and some people, uh, I mean, you can't compare it to what we do or anything like that. But some people have just like hacked the system with it and like make millions off it. Mm. I, I, I watched a documentary on. Uh, QC that play that that, that uh, label in Atlanta who do like uh, City Girls and um, Migos, right? And they're, they're oh. just like, I mean, they like give they each other Bentleys and stuff oh, like really? that. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, and obviously, I'm um, like the context is wildly different, but um, it's it's quite interesting to see people like like make succeed, it really work. Make it you know? Yeah. 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 Amazing. Yeah, I don't know how you do that. Do you have to like name your tunes like Britney Spears? No, no, I think it's just like just 99. literally numbers. Yeah. You know, just like clicks. And then there's the, um, yeah, this guy was telling me, Tom Whitwell, about how um, there are basically uh, tunes that are apparently think are like Spotify is just sewing their own music into things oh, like I've algorithmically about, about algorithmically generated things. Yeah, loads of people are making that, loads that, of money. That aren't like and then like names of artists that have no information online. Like if you Google them they yeah, don't yeah, they yeah. don't exist. And it's that's like, that's odd, isn't it? Like what is going on here? Like I yeah, don't know. Like, yeah. I've no. heard about that as well. I don't know but yeah I'm 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 not again it's I think I think the one thing people should be aware of it when you know if you're going to go down this route which we are is is it is it really engaging do you mean by streaming yeah and yeah. like it just feels like it takes some of the nuance out of like things like packaging the fun of like like being able to hold something obviously but yeah. you know it's just inevitable obviously but i do i do wonder about those things well there's definitely like yeah a reverence to putting on a record because it is basically like a physical you are physically saying i am going to sit down and listen to a piece of music whereas streaming definitely puts it in a world of i am going to have music on in the background and things will tick over and algorithms will take care of it but it's not there is there is not the equivalent of take it out of his packet put it on the thing drop the needle sit your ass down and actually listen to it you don't do that with streaming services no one sits down reverently <laughs> pushes space no, bar no, no. and takes you know and sits back puts their headphones on closes their eyes like yeah you don't do that no you don't you don't so yeah i think i think it'll be, it'll be interesting moving forward on that front now i think like there'll, there'll be like um some kind of interesting moves going on independently um yeah hmm. i hope I'm yeah. pretty sure they will. Bandcamp's. Well, I, 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 I've never had music on Bandcamp, but I like buying stuff off there. Yeah, yeah I've very recently done that as well, and it is, it is good. Yeah. Like, you can make some money, and there's a sense, yeah, there is a sense of, like, connecting more directly with the artist. Totally. And you are buying something as well in most cases, which is not, it is a streaming platform, but I've not personally used it in that way. It feels like a shop. Yeah, it's more of a shop. Yeah. And, and I, so, and but people and people are comfortable with it. A bit like with Amazon, becomes successful because people are comfortable with buying through it. They like the, yeah. the process, and that's good for artists. It means people, more people, will buy music. 
Yeah, totally. So, you know, I think the I think, you know, more exploration on that front will will happen and maybe more live music as well. Like as in, you know, there's still money to be made from selling tickets and people still want to go and see music be performed. And ultimately, obviously like live music is, you know, the recorded music phenomenon is only what 80 90 years old or something at this point, 100 years old or more. But live music will always have a place. I yeah. Know, but well, you're seeing that with uh, labels, aren't they? They're like kind of buying back catalogues. So like, you know, cumulative plays. And it's just like, okay, is this where it's going? Mm. Mm. Which which scares me because like, um, I'm just actually in, in conversation with Warp now about taking some stuff down because I, I don't want it up. It, On the streaming service. Yeah, yeah. It's right. just like, I, it just doesn't reflect what I want there to be there of of what we do and i that i thought i think that's always like really good that was always the way wasn't it when a record came out you would push that record and then that would be visible hmm. in like wherever you were selling it but then now it's just like the most popular tune is going to be up there and yeah it, yeah and that's what people are listening yeah. to, to the detriment of everything else yeah so i think i think what, what i'd like to do is like take a ownership way more of that hmm. and like be selective but then again you you do miss out on that kind of cu cumulative mm. uh, play yeah i don't know like i i did look at earlier at like breakfast i was looking at the plays of like the little like tiny little thing i've got on Bandcamp, and it is interesting seeing plays of the album are just it's just an exponential curve i.e people listen to track one and it just like yeah. falls away <laughs> and it was like it's not many plays so it's like whatever like 800 on track one but it's something only like 64 people make yeah. it through to the very bare end of yeah track. i feel like that is like indicative of every social media platform now you've seen those instagram story things no. oh as in instagram stories. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so if you like click the bottom you see like and then if you do story it's always like yeah we're not interested yeah. after the first clip yeah yeah it's weird yeah like oh, yeah i don't understand instagram stories or snapchat really but yeah yeah i don't know yeah, but it does. You're right. It's like people just don't consume things all the way through. It's just not. It's yeah. not people just want to hear their favourite thing, or people are being algorithmically served things. So your plays are coming from the fact that it's just being like slotted into a playlist. Um, yeah, we need to. I need to talk to Forte about like how like just getting on every single playlist in the world because that's yeah, yeah. That, he seems to be on. Is that uh, what he, yeah? Is he? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's like a bit of like you know backhand skullduggery like yeah, put me on maybe. put me on the sort of yeah. like. I don't know. I don't chill playlist. Yeah, I don't know him, but I always do. I always like if because I've only recently got it be, just because of convenience and um, yeah. I mean, it makes me like a huge hypocrite, but it, it is on my phone. But I, yeah, there's a lot of like interesting things going on. <laughs> it's like also it's um, Forte who's got a load of playlists. So I'm just checking what time my train is. Make sure yeah. uh, it is. Yeah, I think we'll be fine. But um, he's got like a load of his live sets, but under a, like a really weird name. It's like it's not. It doesn't. It's not under the Fortet name. Oh, right. It's under like a pseudonym, but it's all Fortet live shows. Oh, interesting. And on Spotify, <laughs> and I don't know why that's not under his name. Do you know what I mean? Like, and is that to not sully his plays or like mm. detract? Do you know what I mean? I literally got no idea why. Yeah, but he is I on mean, there's in a different way. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's loads of people that are kind of just you know nailing it with the playlists but again mm. that's that just look, sounds like a whole another level of uh you know fuckery i don't want to get into to be honest it's hard enough making a record let alone yeah that. like surely that's the role of a label is to like gamify the system to make get you plays and like yeah they should take care of that for you mm -hmm. i think i think uh like you have to be like KLF and do something like weird, like viral, so you know, viral before viral, do something weird just to like get noticed and played. Yeah, yeah. It it feels like there's like that little. Now it was back then. It was like a honeymoon period of like release. Like you know, you'd go and perform a few things, do some you know live performance sessions or whatever. Now it 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 literally feels like. You know, maybe we'll get a day on the timeline here. <laughs> oh my god! You know what I mean? I don't know, but I'm I'm, I'm cynical about yeah, it, so yeah, it might not be. You know, and like you say, you go back to like 
just trying to make the best thing you can do. But yeah. it does feel very like quick. Yeah, of the cycle. I, yeah, you're, yeah, you're, yeah. It's not flavor of the month. It's flavor of like yeah, yeah. Monday. Yeah. Even bigger records, you know, they yeah. kind of just like, all right. I suppose it's a bit like films. It's like when you look at, you know, in the 1960s or whatever, there was probably only about three films released over like the whole of summer. So everyone, that's just the film that was on was Singing in the Rain. And we all went to see that film. <laughs> Whereas now it's like, you know, you need to get your ass out and actually go and see the film because it will be out, out in a week. Yeah, you know, yeah. do you know what I mean? It's, it's off the screen. It has like its tiny little window and music's obviously just the same. I mean, how many, how many records get released every year? I mean, it, it must be millions, like, or I yeah, mean, yeah. certainly it's, I mean, it's tens of thousands yeah. you know, worldwide. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that's where we kind of are with it. But uh, yeah, um, we're, we're, it, we're really excited about what we do and like finishing another record definitely like it it feels like you said it just feels like overdue now and that's def that's where what we're trying to make and you know do something we like so it's always good when you i think when you get to the point where you're like yeah we've got you know the rough nuts and bolts of it let's just like start digging a bit mm. Mm. Well, good luck man yeah cheers. thanks I very much it. Yes, mate. What a nice man. What a lovely man, I thought. Um, but yes, I think the takeaway for me is, amongst a million other things, two things. One is like the importance of processing. I liked how he was talking about Richard Formby uh, and the Revox machine, and then also obviously the Eventides and the MPC, and just the value in processing. You know, they are obviously a, a one of a plethora of bands that for them processing is kind of half the sound. Boards of Canada, just a little bit. I was listening to Music Has the Right to Children on a drive. I had an amazing drive, driving from Ripon to Harrogate in a open top car, listening to Music Has the Right to Children in blazing sunshine. Very good experience, I have to say. And yeah, another band where processing is the sound. You know, the processing of elements makes them feel lived in and alive in some way. And what James is saying is that, you know, the processing elevated things on news from nowhere to a completely new level. And it was, it took Richard to show them that. And then they were able to take that and, you know, they ran with it and then they process things endlessly. So processing sounds obvious, but quite easy to just not bother and just throw things in without actually taking the time to make sounds your own. And then the other one, is volunteering and working with young people and doing things that aren't just about money but have a humanitarian benefit. I can definitely say, although I did not do this with young people, a volunteering project that I did was by far the best working experience of my entire life. I will link to a blog post, actually, that I wrote, a diary of that project, which was volunteering in a refugee aid centre in Calais which I did a couple of years ago. It is really interesting to hear him say that. And it is something that I think about. It nourishes the soul in a way that money does not. Obviously, you must check out the whole MTS thing that they just released. They've got a whole load of tunes. This is part of the Warp 30th thing. So that hadn't happened when we actually sat down for this interview, but obviously it was being brewed. Just Google the NTS, um, what's it called? Odds and sods or things and bins. Um, but just Google NTS and Dark Star. And I've put loads of links to all this stuff in the description. So if you want to kind of dig back into all the things we talked about from um, how awesome Slower is to, you know, James McVinney, who they were working with the organist, the Keezy iPad app and stuff that he was talking about using with the young people, check it out, especially check out the links to the project that he did in Liverpool. Actually, that was the thing that he wanted me to big up the most. And listen and buy the bloody music. Thank you very much to James. Thank you to Will for letting me use your wonderful flat. He's a beautiful human, is Will. He's my cousin. I love him. He's really my fourth brother. I would also like to thank our sponsors. That would be Thonk, 
www.bildy.co.uk for buildy things. If you want to build stuff, DIY, get your soldering iron dirty, you should thunk our uh, sound as heck. And of course, the beautiful and wonderful signalsounds.com in their new digs in Glasgow. Go pop in and um, give Jason and Alex with a K, my love. I'd say that pretty much wraps her up. Mate, thanks for your time. It's been totes and mosh. Until next time. Bye. <laughs>